Today, we're going to start looking at power series. Remember the way that we want to think about power series. We want to think of a power series as a function in the form of a polynomial with an infinite degree, which is no longer a polynomial. It's a power series. That's why it's a different thing. But that's what the shape is. It's just like we start writing a polynomial and then keep going. So you want to think of a power series as a function. Mainly, I like to cast power series as a function because we can plug stuff into it. And the form is a polynomial with infinite degree. So we think of this as a polynomial with an infinite degree. When we plug stuff into this polynomial with infinite degree, we get a series. So we take input x, and the output will be some series. So here's the general here's the general form of power series. We have c n times x minus a to the n. We have a power of a constant times a power. Uh, sorry, we have a constant times a power of x minus a. This is a power series about a. So that means it's in terms of x minus a. So we'll say this is a power series about a because all the terms have this are x minus a. So when we talk about a power series about a, that means the terms are all going to be powers of x minus a. I will, I don't know where I picked this up, but I will refer to A as the center of the series. I don't think this book refers to A as the center of the series, but it's the it's going to be the middle of the interval of convergence. So I think that's why I started calling it the center. The, the CN, those are all coefficients. Those are all constants. So CN is, um, those are all constants. And usually there'll be some in the form of some n. They'll be related to the n somehow. So that's all I'll write them as c sub n. We have already looked at a power series. We've already looked at it. Uh, um, we've already started looking at power series and deciding where a power series converges. So think about a geometric series. So in a geometric series, we have the sum as n goes from uh, 0 to infinity of a times r to the n. So a plus a r plus a r squared, and so on. And we know that a geometric series converges if, the, if r is less than 1 in absolute value. <clears throat> So we know that the geometric series converges for absolute value of r strictly less than 1 and diverges otherwise. So a geometric series is, very, is like a power series but the coefficients are all constant. So in a geometric series, 
we're looking at a power series where Cn is equal to A. It's the same constant for all n. So we can think of a geometric series as a power series about zero, where the coefficients are all the constant a. When we decide where the series, the geometric series converges and where it diverges, we are finding the interval of convergence for a power series. So the absolute value of R less than one is the interval of convergence So if we think of the, if we just think of the R as the X, if I plug in an R of one half, one half is less than one. So one half gives us a convergent series. If I plug in R equals two, if I plug in R equals two, then two is greater than one and we get a divergent series. If I plug in R equals negative 1.5, the absolute value of negative 1.5 is greater than one. So the geometric series diverges. So we've introduced a phrase here, interval of convergence. The interval of convergence is the set of all X for which the power series converges. So the interval of convergence is the set of X for which a power series converges. The interval of convergence is the set of all X for which the power series converges. So we've said a lot by calling it the interval of convergence. This tells us that the set of X for which a power series converges is in fact going to be an interval. So there are three possibilities. So the interval think about all the x values here. So a power series will always converge at its center. <clears throat> if I plug a into this polynomial then all the terms except the constant zero out. And so I get convergence by default. And everything's gonna be equal to zero. So there are three possibilities for the interval of convergence. One possibility is that the power series only converges at its center. Another possibility is that the power series converges for some finite radius about the center.
So it converges for everything, let's say, between A plus some R and A minus R. I said that backwards. Everything between A minus R and A plus R. Or the, inter the power series convert can converge for all X. So first, The power series, that's right, power series. So the power series converges only when x is equal to a. This means that the radius of convergence is equal to zero. So r up here is gonna be the radius of convergence. So one possibility, the power series only converges when x is equal to a. This means that the radius of convergence is equal to zero. <clears throat> the only way to get this particular power, a particular power series, some power series to converge is to make all the terms equal to zero. They're just poorly behaved. The power series could converge for some finite radius about the center. So we have some finite positive radius like we've drawn up here between A minus R and A plus R. We always get the center. Next possibility is some finite radius about the center. And then the third possibility is that the power series converges for all X. In this case, we would say that the radius of convergence is infinity. So these are the three things that could happen. The radius of convergence can be zero, finite, or infinite. That, that kind of covers all the bases. But we want to recognize that each of these three things are possibilities. Tying this to a geometric series, we can see that the absolute value of r less than one does take the form of the interval of convergence. This geometric series is a series about zero. So the center of the series is at zero. If I let R equal zero, then I all these terms except for the first are zero. And so we get kind of converges, um, trivially converges because it's just one constant term. Now we know that a geometric series converges if uh, the common ratio is less than one in absolute value. So we know that this converges for everything between, strictly between negative one and one. So if we put the center at zero, we, we see we have a radius of one. So for example, the series as n goes from zero to infinity of a times x, the n converges if the absolute value of x is less than one. We can see from this x to the n that the power series that the center is zero. So if I draw a picture of this interval of convergence,
the center is at zero. And <clears throat> the interval of convergence is absolute value of X is less than one because we know a geometric series converges if the common ratio is less than one in absolute value. So if X, if the absolute value of X is less than one, this is the same as X being between negative one and one. This is how we rewrite an absolute, absolute value inequality as a compound inequality. So here we have an absolute value inequality. And we've rewritten it as a compound inequality. So we're looking at everything between negative one and one. And so we get the center zero and we get a finite radius about the center of one. That's the radius of this interval. So the radius of convergence is the radius of the interval. So it's important to look at the geometric series as a starting point for understanding power series. Because here we have the center is at zero and the radius is one. Now we could just, if we just start making adjustments to our form, then we can um, quickly identify what the interval of convergence is for a power series in general. So let's look at some variations on this theme. Let's suppose we have the sum as n goes from zero to infinity. I'm gonna pick a value for a, let's say five. And let's suppose that instead of x to the n, I have x minus three to the n. So here we get convergence if, uh, or so we have a center of three. We think what's gonna make all these terms equal to zero? Three, three will make all these terms zero. So this power series definitely converges if X equals three. So if I just start drawing the interval of convergence, we know that the power series converges here. The rest of the series is geometric. So instead of saying this converges if the absolute value of X is less than one, I just take the base X minus three and say the absolute value of that has to be less than one. And I'm just taking what we know about geometric series and saying this converges if the absolute value of X minus three is less than one. This absolute value inequality can be turned into a compound inequality. This means that negative one is less than X minus three is less than one, which can be written as the compound inequality. If we just add three all the way through, two is less than X is less than four. So the power series will converge for everything between two and four. If X is strictly between two and four, then X minus three will be strictly less than one and we'll get a convergent geometric series. So we go down to two and all the way up to four and our radius of convergence is still one.
The second example is still geometric with a common ratio of x minus three. The first example was common uh, geometric with a common ratio of x. But in this second example, five times x minus three to the n, this is geometric with a common ratio of x minus three. So let's look at another variation. Let's look at the sum as n equals zero to infinity of five times x over two to the n. Notice I still just have a constant out in front. The only n shows up as an exponent. So this series is geometric with a common ratio of x over two. The center, there's no x plus or x minus, so the center is at zero, because dividing by two is not how we determine the center. What are we adding or subtracting from the x? So the center is zero. We can read this as geometric. with a common ratio of x over two. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna read it as a geometric series and we're gonna say that this series converges if the common ratio, oops, not converges, converges, if the common ratio of x over two is less than one in absolute value. I can turn this into a compound inequality. If an absolute value is less than one, that means we are between negative one and one. And I can write this compound inequality in terms of x if I multiply by two. And we get this interval, x between negative two and two. Fits with what we expect should happen. We know that if we plug in zero, we'll get convergence because that's the center. That uh, zero will zero out all the terms except for the constant term. But now instead of going between negative one and one, we're going to X is going to go between negative two and two. So that X over two gave us a radius of two. So this power series will converge for every, for all the X between negative two and two. Let's look at another example. I'm gonna just change, I'm gonna combine pretty much the last two examples into this example. Let's suppose we have the series n goes from zero to infinity. I'm gonna keep it five, so keep it geometric. But now the common ratio is gonna be x minus three over two. Now we gotta think about what's the center. The center is what will make the geometric part zero or the common ratio zero. So our center is at three. Because we have a still just have a constant out in front, this is geometric with a common ratio of 
So this is geometric with a common ratio of x minus three over two. And a geometric series converges if its common ratio is less than one in absolute value. So this series converges. If the absolute value of x minus three over two is less than one. We can turn this absolute value inequality into a compound inequality. By saying that the absolute value, uh, since the absolute value of x minus three over two is less than one, that means x minus three over two is between negative one and one. And if I write this, uh, if I solve this for x, which is not really necessary, but we're trained to do that. So let's, um, as students, so let's just do that. This is where we see the pertinent information. But we might want to add three all the way through and negative two uh, plus three is uh, one plus an x is less than five. If I draw a picture of the interval from one to five, we have three at its center and a radius of two. So in the center, we have a three. This power series converges for everything between one and five. And there we see our radius of two. Just looking into, uh, just thinking about the future, instead of describing this as the interval from one to five, if we can get away with it, we're actually going to prefer absolute value inequalities for reasons. We can describe this interval also as the absolute value of x minus three must strictly be less than two. Typically, we like to solve for the, we like to write our interval of convergence with an absolute value inequality if we can. The main reason that I, I like to describe things this way is that this expression says x is everything within two units of three. That's the way we can read this particular absolute value inequality. Usually this gets translated into algebra classes as when you see this, do this thing. When you see this absolute value inequality, set up this compound inequality. But if we read this absolute value of x minus three is less than two, just multiply our original by two. We can read this expression by saying, x is everything within two units of three. And then we can think of that as from one to five. In some situations, it's gonna be better to say X is everything between one and five. It might be more useful to say that X is everything within two units of three, because now we're expressing an interval with a center and a radius. Any questions? So this raises an important consideration. All the examples that we've done so far have been geometric. I've just been dropping a five. All the coefficients have just been a five. What if it's not, what if our series is not geometric? What if the coefficient is not just a constant five? I'll put this all on the next page.
So this raises an important question. We analyzed all the power series on the previous page by looking at them as geometric series. But what if the coefficient isn't constant? What if we can't just look at things as a geometric series? What if we're not, we don't, we're not just given a geometric series? So what if the power series isn't geometric? What if, for example, we have the series as n goes from zero to infinity of let's say five n times x minus three to the n. So now that the coefficient cn is not constant, so CN, or the center is still three. Because if we plug in three, then we zero out the series except for the first term, which is actually just zero. So we zero out the series. We finish zeroing out the series. Plug in three, that's us going, finish it. But now, instead of the coefficient being constant, Cn is equal to 5n, which is not constant. So we can't just think of this as a geometric series. So what we're going to do is look at the, the coefficient of 5n and say, well, that's polynomial. So we're just gonna think of this as a geometric series. We're just totally gonna to cheat. Here's what we do. If we're looking at a power series in general and we don't know what's gonna happen, we can run a ratio test. And that's why we're going to be able to ignore any polynomials in the coefficient. And we're gonna focus on the exponential factors in our terms. So we're gonna be able to ignore the polynomials. So, in general, to find the interval of convergence for a power series, we do a ratio test. So we're gonna do a ratio test to find the interval of convergence for a power series. So since we're doing a ratio test, this is why we're going to be able to ignore the polynomial parts until we start caring about the endpoints. And this is also why we're going to look for things like factorials and also why, as in the previous example, When I changed the common ratio to from x to an x over two, that changed the radius to two. Exponential stuff is going to adjust the radius of convergence. So let's do a ratio test. Let's take the limits as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus one, so five n plus one times x minus three to the n plus one over a n, which is five n times x minus three to the n. Notice that we can simplify the x minus three to the n plus one over x minus three to the n. x minus three to the n plus one over x minus three to the n is just x minus three.
Because if we have n plus one of something divided by n of something, n of them will cancel out and just leave x minus three to the first power. But this is in absolute value signs. This no longer involves n, so I can factor it out. But it was an absolute value, so it's still an absolute value. And then the rest of it is the limits as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of five times n plus one over five times n. So when n is very large, this part of the limit goes to one because I have five billion and one divided by five billion and that's pretty much one. So this part of the limit So the limit from the ratio test is the absolute value of x minus three. And the ratio test says a series is absolutely convergent if the limit from the ratio test is less than one. So if the limit from the ratio test is less than one, then the series converges. If the integral, for, oh, sorry, if the limit from the ratio test is less than one, then the series is absolutely convergent. So by putting a power series through a ratio test, we can find the main part of the interval of convergence. So this series converges if the absolute value of x minus three is less than one. We've got the center from the x minus three to the n. We ignore the five n parts. And we, that we just see, since all we have is x minus three to the n, the radius of convergence is gonna be stuck at one. What the ratio test doesn't tell us is what happens when the limit from the ratio test is equal to one. So what we have so far is we have convergence at three and a radius of one. sorry, a center of three, I can't remember what I said, and a radius of one. So that's gonna be everything between uh, two and four, like we had before. If X is strictly between two and four, then we know we get absolute convergence but we don't know what's going on at two and at four. The ratio test does not know what's happening at two and four. So the ratio test does not tell us about the endpoints of the interval of convergence. The ratio test does not tell us what's happening at the end points of, in, of the interval of convergence. That is two and four in this case. So 
So we have to test those individually. And we'll do that just by plugging them into the power series and seeing what happens. So if x equals two, then the power series looks like the series n goes from zero to infinity of five n times two minus three to the n. And I can simplify this. Uh, this is the series n goes from zero to infinity of five n times negative one to the n. Here, the limit of the terms does not exist. The limit of the terms is not zero. So the series diverges. As n goes to infinity, 5n goes to infinity. So the limit of the terms will not be zero. Therefore, the series diverges. Therefore, the power series diverges when x equals two. So when I say diverges here, we're saying that the power series diverges when x equals two. We've also got to check x equals four. So let's see what series we get when x is equal to four. Remember when we plug a number into a power series, we get a series series. So the series n goes from zero to infinity. Now we're gonna replace the x with a four. And now we're going to get 5n times 1 to the n, or just 5n. So that diverges as well for the same reason. The limit of the terms is not 0. And so the power series diverges when x equals 4. So the interval of convergence is absolute value of x minus three is less than one. We can phrase it this way because the endpoints are not included. Now it could be the the Instead of a 5n, instead of cn equals 5n, it could be that cn was, say, 1 over n squared. In which case, when we plug in the endpoints, we would get a convergent series. In which case, the interval of convergence would be the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1, because the endpoints are now included. It could be that instead of five over n, we had, uh, sorry, five n, we had one over n. In which case on, when x equals two, we'd have an alternating harmonic series, which converges conditionally, but converges. But on the other end, we'd have the harmonic series, which diverges. So it could converge on one end point and diverge at the other end point. What we need to see from all this is that the exponential factors in uh, the term of a power series determine the center and the radius. The polynomial factors will determine what's going on at the end points. We also need to consider the case 
where we have a radius of convergence of zero or a radius of convergence of infinity. We found out that the exponential factors in our term tell us about the center and the radius and the finite radius. The polynomial factors or the rational factors or the radical factors tell us about what's going on at the endpoints. So there's another type of factor that could show up in our power series where we have a radius of zero or a radius of infinity. So we'll talk about that on Monday. That's gonna do it for today. That's gonna do it for this week. Everybody have a nice weekend and thanks for playing.